Hello everyone, this is Christian and you are welcome back to the Don't Hub channel. So errors are part of our daily life as developers or programmers, right? Which we can't go away from it. Yeah. No matter the level of experience you are, you are definitely going to face errors, right? But to build a robust application, there will be the need for you to know how to handle errors in the right way, okay? And which makes it very, very important for us to cover this in our backend development journey with Node.js, okay? So for this and more, let's dive into it. All right, so at the top here, I've listed some reasons why we should handle errors in the right way, okay? So the first one is to improve user experience. I mean, if you encounter errors while using application, the message that is supposed to pop up should be, I mean, user-friendly. It should make sense to the user, okay? And then the next one is to develop robust quiz code base okay once you handle errors in the right way you come up with a robust code base which leads to robust application okay the next one is to reduce development time by finding errors effectively okay and then the last one is to avoid suddenly stopping of application so once your application runs into an error you might not want to shut down the application or stop the application from running okay you might want to proceed to uh, execute other operations okay which if you handle your errors in the right way you can go away, away with sudden stopping of application okay so these are some of the reasons now let's move on to the actual thing okay i have some code here and i would like us to um try it okay so i'm just going to copy this and then in my working directory i have three files here i have the index where we are going to uh, paste the code okay then i have my node md file here inside here i have hello world as a text saved and then um the notes is where i'll be reading from okay so here what i intend to do with this code is to read from a file called node with the extension txt okay and once i read whatever is in the context of the file i would like to uh, print it here okay and then the next one is to Prints out some information which is the code ends here okay so i'm going to save this file and you can open your terminal by just clicking on this three dots here and then terminal okay or you can just come down here drag and pull this one up okay now we will have to run the application so i'm just going to type node space bar index okay dot js which is this file this is the file we want to execute so i'm just going to press enter to execute it all right so as you can see you're having some should i say terrible information here okay so actually there is an error okay and for now everything doesn't make sense except this part which is no such file or directory comma open and then it's giving us the directory okay so that is the only part that makes sense now the next thing i would like to point out is if you realize this code wasn't executed okay so if you come down here i mean you can see a lot of things uh no such file and all that but there is no i mean place or nowhere we could find this which means this code wasn't executed okay so that is what i was talking about there was sudden stopping of the program because it encountered an error okay so what if I tell you there is a way we can handle all these things, which we're going to look at it in a minute. Okay. So now let's move on to some types of error we have. So for now we have two. Okay. We have the pro uh, programmer errors and then we have the operational errors. Okay. So the programmer errors are the errors that are created by the programmer. I mean, so this one, this error is coming from us because if you could see here, we have node.txt, right? And then here we have node.md. So we are trying to read from a file that's, that doesn't exist. That is basically the, the whole uh, cause of the problem, okay, or cause of the error, okay. So what I'm saying here is this error is created by us, which is the program, okay. And then we also have operational errors. These errors are not created by us. I mean, if I say us, the program is okay. This is could be a reason of, let's say, timeout from a request or if you are the server is not able to connect 
or if you're unable to connect to a server or a code base something like that right so those ones are not from the programmer okay they are external factors so these are the two types of errors we have and we have some techniques which we can use to handle these errors and we're gonna go through each of them and every one of them okay so we are going to start with trying catch block you move on to callbacks promises and then you end at event emitters okay so first let's try again with the catch block so if you look at the catch block it has the try block and then it has the catch block i mean <laughs> the name sounds quite intuitive right yeah so you try whatever you want in the try block and then if there is an error you catch it in the error block that is basically what so let's go back to our code and let's do a couple of changes here so down here i'm just going to type in try if you are using vs code of course you have this here so you can just click on it or you can just type it manually try and then you bring your brackets catch and then your brackets and then that is the syntax okay so now i would like us to copy this these are the things you would like to try you would like to do i mean okay and then you bring it inside here and then down here you use console dot error right and then here you just try and get the error here and let's save it okay. because i'm using uh, prettier so my code is automatically form formatted for me right and then now let's go back and try it again so here i'm just going to type in oops what's happening so let me clear it up okay. so here i'm just going to try the node and then space bar index again just to run the file so i'm just going to run it okay so we are getting the error again um okay so i made a mistake here everything is working but i just wanted to bring this code down here okay so this console log should come after we've done with the reading of the file okay because this is a separate thing i would like to do okay so now let's save it and then go back here and then let's type in or let's run the file okay so from now i'm not going to say node and then index.js again once i see executing or run the file i mean just type in node space bar index.js okay and let me show you a trick once you come here because if you just you've uh, type it in the terminal already you can just click on the top arrow in on your keyboard okay and then it's just going to bring it and then you press enter okay good so now this is what i wanted to show you earlier on if you could see we are having the error here okay i mean the error is still existing which we are going to work on it but down here we are having the code ends here which means even though there was an error our application or our program was able to run successfully from top to bottom okay so now what i would like to do here is we can just give an information says which says uh the file doesn't exist okay man this this sounds much more uh, it makes more sense than the one we are having currently okay so now let's execute or let's run the file okay boom and as you can see here we are having an error right and then now we are giving out we are giving back some information i mean just to make sense and then we are also having our code ends here okay which means we've been able to handle this error in the right way so this is how the catching uh, try and catch block works okay now let's move on to the next one which from now on was, i'm just going to speed up a little bit because now yeah so the next one is promises okay so this is how the promises works you call whatever operation or whatever uh, code or whatever thing you want to execute okay whatever function you want to execute or method okay and then you pass in your parameters and then the last part or the far end of the parameters you come up or you just call a function okay so this function will be called after the execution of this code okay and this is how the function works the function has two parameters it has an error and then a resource okay so that is if this function or this method is returning something okay if it's not returning anything then it will just be error which will be the parameter for this function okay so my bad okay 
So you let me just copy this code and let's go to our index.js file. Man. The other place is just a little bit nice. Okay. So what I was saying earlier when was uh, you have your method, right? You have your parameters here, and the next one is your callback. So this is the callback. Okay. And currently we are working on callbacks. Okay. We can use these callbacks to handle the error, right? And this is what we do. We just check if there is an error. We console log the error here. And then if there is no error, we proceed to this part. Okay. Once there is an error, we console log the error and then we return. I'm hoping it sounds good, right? So this is exactly what is going to happen. If there is an error, this error will be true. Okay. I mean, it will contain some information. It could be object or whatever. If there is no error, this error variable or parameter you are seeing here will be set to now. Okay. So that's when we are checking here. If there's an error indeed, then console, console log the error and then return. Okay. But then if there is no error, this part won't be executed. And then it will now move to the next one, which is print out the results. Okay. So here we can just add something like file content okay great and then let's save it so once we save this and then we go back to our terminal let's run our index file and as you can see we are having the error here right but then we also have our code ends here which means um we've been able to handle the error in the right way okay so even here we can just say again the file does doesn't exist okay and then let's i mean let's clear our terminal just type clear okay and then now let's run our uh, file again and as you can see we have code ends here and then file doesn't exist okay so we've been able to handle it what if we change it to the actual then md okay and then now let's run it again Okay, so as you can see now we have the code ends here and then we have the file content right here okay which means we've been able to handle the error with our callback um at this point i would say congratulations right <laughs> yeah so we've known try and catch block and then now we've also learned callbacks okay